What's up, everybody? This is Josh with Brew Chatter. RJ, Brew Chatter. <laughs> Boom. Coming at you from episode five today. Uh, <clears throat> Pigeon Head Brewery. Yep, we're talking lagers, so we came over to Pigeon Head Brewery because who better to talk lagers with than a brewery that does almost all lagers? Mm -hmm. So Brian's making some awesome lager beers over here and winning awards with them so we gold figured, medals gold medals baby yeah so, the pilsner probably one of another one of the hardest categories to master and win seriously well uh, it's cool so we're gonna we're gonna get down we're gonna check his process we're gonna bring it down to homebrew process and it's gonna be a lot of really good information so stay tuned stay tuned hang out roll that intro roll the title baby roll the title intro <laughs> Hey everybody, this is RJ with Brew Chatter TV and today we're over here at Pigeon Head with Brian, co-owner and brewmaster at Pigeon Head Brewing, enjoying some fantastic lagers and thought we'd catch up with you and get some tips and tricks on brewing lagers and Excellent, right how on. you do it versus how we do it and enjoy some of your beer at the same time. Perfect, perfect. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks right. for having us hey, today. thanks for coming out. Hold on, hold on. Sorry everybody. Totally forgot to introduce this week's awesome B-roll. Uh, virtual tour of the brewery, going all the way through. There's even some canning stuff in there. So let's do that first, then let's get back to Brian and Brewing Loggers. And go. Are you gonna roll the B-roll? I thought you were doing that. Roll the B-roll. started this where were you trained how did you become a co-owner and brewmaster yeah so I like many uh, other brewmasters out there started home brewing back in college uh, we made some pretty awful beers back then <laughs> but Part um, of fun. yes for sure yeah uh, and bouncing around jobs and I kind of ended up saying you know I'm gonna make a career change and uh, I love beer and so I, I ended up going to school at the uh, World Brewing Academy, which is um, part of a half Siebel uh, Institute in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, the other half is in Dumans Academy at, outside of Munich. Um, so cool. Yeah, so I got an international diploma in brewing technology from, uh, from the World Brewing Academy. And, uh, you know, I wanted to take my brew, my brew game to the next level, so what better way than to, than to go back to school for it. Uh, I did a short short stint down in Temecula, California for a little bit and ended up coming back up here to Reno for, to Pigeon Head. Nice. And uh, took over ownership of the place eventually, it was about a year and a half ago. Um, after brewing here for three and a half or four years, I uh, took the next step then to the ownership side, which has been challenging, but um, we're currently brewing and, and uh, doing the, the business side of it also, so. Awesome, very yeah. cool, man. Yeah. Well, you guys are putting out fantastic beers and you just got Thank a couple you. medals the other day, huh? We did, we just won a gold medal at the Can Can Awards for both our Black Lager and our Silver Sage Pale Ale. Nice. So, yeah, Proof we're pretty excited about that. something, right? <clears throat> I hope so, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it, so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right awesome, on. man. Well, let's, let's jump into lagers. So, okay. on the homebrew side of things, like for us, we usually recommend a good lager strain, of course, mm -hmm. and then you know, 28 days of primary fermentation. We usually do the last four days as a diacetyl rest. Um, sure. <clears throat> what do you do on the pro side of, of things? Sure, so our, our normal primary fermentations for our lagers will take um, somewhere in the 10 to 14 uh, day range. Uh, we, we ferment in the mid 50s for most of our lagers. 
uh, with the exception of our India Pale Lager, which is in the low 60s, actually. Oh, really? That high? Yeah, we use a, uh, a California um, lager strain, which is kind of, it's the um, Anchor Steam yeast oh, okay. strain. Nice. So it's a little higher, you know, produces some of those um, esters that you'd like for a hoppy beer. Awesome. But most of our lagers are in the, in the mid 50s. Um, We'll do that for 10 to 14 for through primary fermentation. Once it's finished, uh, I'll bump the temperature up to 60, 62, um, and let it sit another seven to 10 days uh, for the diacetyl rest. Okay. And normally it'll clean up everything in that amount of time. It does a pretty good job um, of doing that. And I'll test it with the little microwave test. So heat up your, take a small sample. Heat it up to 140 to 160 degrees, or just put it in a microwave for 30, 40 seconds. Um, and you can smell it. If it smells like popcorn, it's not done yet. Um, it might take a few times to kind of get good at that, but once you, you know, once you don't smell that popcorn anymore, you're good to go. Um, I usually crash it then a few degrees at a time until I get down to 32 degrees. Okay. Um, so we're at the 21 to 25 day mark, I guess, at this point. All right. Um, and then we'll actually harvest our yeast. We use our yeast strain up to nine or 10 times here um, for several different beers. Uh, and then we'll transfer the beer from our primary fermentation tank to our horizontal lager tanks, where it'll sit for a minimum of another three weeks. Wow. before it's filtered and carbonated. Okay, so your, your process, it's kind of the classical process and it's very sure. similar. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of home brewers may not be able to adjust that temperature as easily as you can. Sure. Uh, which, which is part of it, but if you can, you recommend testing terminal gravity and then sure, yeah. start raising it up for that, that diacetyl rest from there. Yeah, I'll actually turn the temperature up right before terminal gravity. Oh, okay. So maybe three to five points before it hits terminal gravity. Nice. Um, so if your terminal gravity is, if specific gravity speaking, maybe 10, 10, let's say at 10, 14, 10, 15, it'll raise the temperature up because that fermentation will create heat. It'll help your um, temperature rise. Awesome. To get to the temperature that you need to do the rest at and then let it sit for that rest after you hit terminal gravity. Awesome. During and after. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All the way through. Yeah. I love it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Now, um, one thing you mentioned is you have those cool lagering tanks. Sure. And yeah. so from there, it's off the yeast. It's ready to roll. This is just actually lagering, just cold storage for a minimum of three weeks. Yeah. Sure. And um, we'll pull the majority of the yeast out, but there's still yeast in suspension when it goes to the lager tanks because that yeast will needs to be in suspension to, pull, to, to uh, pull out things like, you know, this, lager strains are known for sulfur right. uh, production uh, and a few other things, but they'll take that sulfur and, and other byproducts out when they lager at colder temperatures. Um, so we'll actually leave some yeast in suspension. It's not filtered or anything at this point um, when it's lagering in that for those three to four weeks or however long you can keep it in there. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right, so, so bringing this over to the homebrew scale then, you do standard fermentation, and then let's say, you know, you get into kegs or you get into bottles, and then just cold storage, minimum three weeks, or is that gonna change style to yeah. style, beer to beer? Yeah, you know, the longer you can let it sit, really. But if I had a couple right. months to do it, I would do it uh, if our production schedule allowed it. Right. But um, but I've noticed, but even between two and three weeks, three weeks is definitely better than two weeks. So okay. um, I've noticed they're at around the three week mark is when it's really cleaned up pretty well, you know. And after that, it, the returns get smaller and smaller. Right. Um, but the, it does help to let it sit longer than that if you can. But yeah, I've found at least three weeks is a is a pretty good seems to be the point. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Very cool. Now. <clears throat> Okay, so um, one other thing I wanted to ask you is for any, any tips and tricks, like I know we talked a lot about the process stuff so far, and, and I'd really like to, if you have, like if you're home brewing, this is one of the best things you can do to make your lager come out. What, a, what kind of tips and tricks do you have for um, us on the smaller scale? Sure, I'd say 
um, when in doubt, just let it sit. Let it know? sit. I like that. Uh, if you're if you're tasting something in there that you're maybe not pleased with, don't freak out. Vloggers just take time. Um, the best thing you can do is just let it sit for a while. And like I mentioned at the end of fermentation, to check check for diacetyl because the main couple things you're really looking for are diacetyl, sulfur. Those are kind of the, the big ones that people look for, right? right. Um, just let it sit longer. Just let it sit at higher temperatures for the diacetyl rest a little longer. Let it sit at lower temperatures to clean up some of that sulfur uh, and other byproducts. You know, if you're unhappy with it, just let it sit for a while. <laughs> I like trust. That. Trust the science. <laughs> trust the science. The moral <laughs> of the story: let it sit. Trust the science. That's right. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Well, thank you for giving us a tour of your brewery, of course, letting yeah. us see the canning line, and, and sharing your knowledge with all of us so we can brew lagers that are as good as yours. Absolutely, anytime. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Brew on. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Get it straight in my head here. Okay. <laughs> hey. I'm going to start with Brucranium this time. <laughs> okay. If you want to know a little bit more about loggers and a lot of the science behind it and going over Force VDK and a lot of the other stuff that we covered with Brian today, um, go over to Brucranium. We just did a full write-up on loggers and process and everything. Um, lots of good info over there. And, you know, thank you for letting us come in and, and Absolutely, yeah. taking us for a tour in the brewery and the canning line and all the stuff and, and sharing your knowledge with us. We really appreciate it. Hey, man. thank you so That's much. Awesome. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Brew on. Mm -hmm.